different people have different body types, and there's a couple of rules that govern some of the trends that we see. There are a couple different body types out there. You probably know a friend who's not happy with the one they have. You might have heard words like ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph before. I don't tend to hear these words thrown around in science, but we, it is a proven fact that there are just different types of bodies out there. And there's a couple different rules that we have from ecology that help us understand the different trends that we see. The first one is Bergman's rule. And this is that we tend to find larger animals in colder climates, but smaller animals in warmer climates. So here we can see this demonstrated with these deer. The Michigan deer, it has a much larger body size of the similar deer that lives in Nicaragua, which is of course a lot warmer than Michigan. What's going on here is this is the difference between surface area and mass. So here in our smaller cube that has a uh, size of one, the mass is one whatever unit we're talking about squared, but our surface area is six. So if we divide the surface area by the mass, we get a ratio of six. Now, if we simply double the length of the size of our cube here, our mass um, increases to eight, but the surface area increases to 24. Um, so we actually just have, we are seeing that there, even though the surface area does increase, it doesn't increase as much as the mass does. So if we do the same ratio, surface area divided by the mass, now we have a ratio of three. So the bigger you are, the easier it is to retain heat. And this is the primary strategy that animals use if they live in a really cold place. You want to retain heat as best you can. But if you're in a really hot place, you want to do the opposite. You want to dissipate heat as much as possible because you don't want to overheat. So we see, in general, bigger animals in cold environments and smaller animals in hot environments. The next rule we want to talk about is Allen's rule. Now we're going to talk about the length of extremities, so arms and legs or ears. Um, we find longer extremities in warm climates, but shorter extremities in cold climates. Um, we've Here we can look at an example with different rabbits. So our Lepus arctis, that is an arctic hare. First, you notice that all of its extremities, arms and legs and ears are much shorter. It also has some behavioral adaptations. You notice it's holding everything close in. And these other forms, these are getting to progressively hotter climates. Now their limbs are much longer and they have their ears standing up upright. This is a way that they can dissipate heat because if you live in a warmer climate, you wanna make sure to lose as much heat as possible. So we can, again, use our little cubes here to demonstrate this idea, but now the mass is the same in both of these examples. Here, we, we first have a cube, so here we have less surface area relative to mass. But if we simply arrange our cubes on top of each other, now we have more surface area relative to mass. So if you have the same mass, it's much easier to dissipate heat if you are a longer and thinner animal rather than a, you know, cubic <laughs> animal here. Um, so this is just a different strategy that animals can use to dissipate heat if you're in a warmer environment. We see the exact same thing happen with humans. So some populations have been living closer to the equator for several generations, and these populations tend to be taller, thinner, and have really long arms and legs. Other populations have been living in cold places for many generations. So these populations tend to be shorter and squatter, but and just, you know, short arms and legs and just kind of big all around. Um, we also see populations adapted to cold environments have a larger uh, layer of subcutaneous fat, so it's easier for them to retain heat. So can you explain? What are some of the rules that help explain some of these variations in body type?